Praise the Lord. Uh, welcome to this Sabbath's health nugget. This week's health nugget will be on deep vein thrombosis. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Momanyi Mokaya, and I'll be taking you through the, the nugget, as I said earlier. Uh, pray for some calmness so that we can actually pray and begin this session. Let us pray. Our Father, what in heaven, as we start the health nugget, enable us to understand and put into practice what we're going to learn today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So, our topic today is deep vein thrombosis. I will start by the definition. This is a condition whereby it is characterized by the formation of a blood clot that is characteristically found in the deep veins of the extremities of the body, mostly the legs and the hands, but it can be found in any other part of the body. This condition is serious, requiring prompt intervention when it leads, and of course, we need to prevent it even before it presents itself. So coming to the epidemiology, basically just to see how common it is in the population, we see that it is a common condition with an estimated incidence of around one to two cases per 1,000 individuals per year. Of course, it is more common in older individuals and people with certain risk factors, as we are going to see later. So who's vulnerable to getting the deep vein thrombosis? We see that there is a triad that is associated with people who have this condition. If you look at it in a form of a triangle, at the top we have what is called venous stasis, basically the blood within the blood vessels is not going back to the heart. We have vascular damage, meaning there's inflammation in the blood vessels of the body, be it the arteries, be it the veins, and we all know that veins are the blood vessels that return blood towards the heart. And the last one is what we call hypercoagulability. It is basically a state between fluidity and clotting of the blood as it is in the blood vessels. So one of them is prolonged immobility that can happen when one is on a long flight or one has prolonged bed rest or when one has physical injury as one is immobile and actually just sleeps in the bed for most of the time. Another one is surgery, especially when one has surgery of the pelvic region and basically of the extremities uh, enabling one not to walk. Those ones actually predispose one to what we call venous stasis. Another risk factor is actually cancer treatment or cancer itself of any kind. Cancers produce various elements that actually predispose the blood to clot. In our triad, it actually leads to hypercoagulability. The other one is hormonal therapy. We find that the contraceptives that the ladies take in order to prevent um, as a form of birth control, it leads to hypercoagulability, hence predisposes one to get uh, deep vein thrombosis. The other one is pregnancy and the period that is after, that is called the postpartum period. In this period, we find that there are various hormones that are produced in large quantities that predispose one to DVT. In our triangle, it falls into the hypercoagulability. The other one is obesity. Obesity in the form that when one is actually obese, he has very many tissues. And hence, we find that the blood does not flow smoothly from the extremities towards the, towards the heart. The other one is smoking. The other one is dehydration. When you don't take enough water, you find that the blood is not fluid enough, and you find that it actually stops within the blood vessels. 
The other one is a family or personal history of deep vein thrombosis. Once you get it one time, your risk of getting another episode of DVT is actually higher. The other one is called varicose veins. Basically, the veins of the feet or of the extremities are actually dilated. And the veins actually have valves that actually propel blood towards the heart. And if these veins are incompetent, the forward flow of blood from the legs towards the heart is impaired. And hence, you are more prone to get DVT. The other one is inherited clotting factors, whereby some certain individuals have genetic um, modifications that predispose them to form clots more easily. So what are the common signs and symptoms of DVT? Basically the clinical presentation. Individuals who have this condition normally have pain and tenderness in the affected leg. And we normally find that they have tenderness in the calf region or the thigh region. We find that the affected leg is actually swollen and is actually warm. And it's normally associated with some form of discoloration and some redness. Uh, some of the individuals normally have difficulty walking or standing. And most of the people who have this uh, condition are normally asymptomatic, meaning they don't have any symptoms at all. And some of them present with the late complications as you are going to find out later. So coming to the complications of DVT. The first one and the most lethal one is an acute pulmonary embolism, meaning that the blood clot can actually dislodge from the veins of the leg, travel to the heart, and go to the blood vessels that supply the lungs. And when it lodges in those blood vessels, there is no oxygen that will be supplied to the lungs, and hence no oxygen that will be supplied to the tissues of the body. Hence, uh, events after that lead to a cardiac arrest and you'll actually just die. The other one is a blood clot in the kidney, known as renal vein thrombosis. The most classical one is a heart attack, whereby you have a blood clot in the vessels supplying the heart. Another one is a stroke. We all know what a stroke is. You have a blood clot in the vessels that supply the brain. The others are chronic venous insufficiency. Basically, when you have a blood clot, it means that the blood in the extremities does not actually go back to the heart and hence you have symptoms of 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 pain of of feeling heaviness as we discussed earlier the leg will also be swollen will also be dematous all these constellation of syndromes predispose you to a condition known as chronic venous insufficiency and ultimately you'll have the post thrombotic insufficiency so the treatment of this condition once a person is diagnosed with dvt the ideal treatment is anticoagulation anticoagulation is blood uh, sorry a medication that actually breaks down the the clots in the in the blood vessels and it reduces the risk and the formation of new blood clots within the, within the blood vessels. Another one is the compression stockings. Compression stockings are stockings that are worn in order to reduce swelling and improve blood flow within the affected leg. If it is found in the acute setting, thrombolytic therapy can be administered, whereby these are medications that are given via a vein that will actually break down the clot. It's normally given in people and individuals with what we described earlier, the pulmonary embolism that is actually found in the acute setting. So it brings me to my last slide. How do we prevent it? We prevent it actually by moving uh, regularly, especially in periods of prolonged immobility as we said earlier, if you are taking a long flight, you are advised actually to walk around so that the muscles of the leg actually compress the veins and actually propel the blood towards the heart. If you actually have bed rest, you are advised actually to sit out of bed and actually walk to the washroom and back to your bed and don't sleep for a prolonged period of time. If you are at high risk, uh, we discussed the risk factors earlier, 
you are advised to wear compression stockings and these stockings will actually compress the muscles of the leg and will actually propel the blood towards the, the heart. Uh, taking anticoagulant medication, of course this one should be prescribed by a health care provider and it will actually be breaking down the clots as they form and hence you won't, you won't get this condition. Of course, if you manage the comorbids um, of any disease that you have, mostly of the blood vessels, if you have any heart disease, if you have diabetes, if you have cancer, the earlier you manage it, the better for you, as this condition won't, won't affect you. And uh, if you actually maintain a healthy weight, as we saw, obesity is one of the risk factors for that. If you maintain a healthy diet, of course, a diet that is rich in fruits and vegetables. We drink lots of water, as we saw, dehydration is one of the risk factors that can actually propel you to getting uh, deep vein thrombosis. And of course, avoiding smoking, avoiding uh, alcohol, and some caffeinated drinks. Um, we also realize that uh, wearing uh, tight socks can also uh, predispose you to, to getting uh, DVT, and of course also varicose veins as the propulsion of blood from the extremities, which is the legs mostly, is uh, impaired. Uh, that brings me to the end of my presentation. Uh, may you all be blessed.